Welcome to Everything Business Consulting, a podcast dedicated to business consulting success. It's for people who are already a business consultant and want to improve their skills. Maybe they're an accountant and want to offer consulting services to their clients. They could be an ex-corporate who wants to get out of the rat race and become a self-employed business consultant, or you've owned a business before and you now want to use the skills that you've learned to help others in business. My name's David Thexter. And I'm Julius Bloom. Everything Business Consulting is brought to you by Consult X, a global business consulting community that gives you everything you require to take control of your lifestyle and income by becoming a successful business consultant. Consult X guides you through the entire process of building and running your own consulting business with a complete online academy, a system to acquire clients, a framework and software to provide them with real results, an international community of like-minded individuals. Hi Bruce, welcome to our interview section. Bruce is based in Helensville, which is a nice little coastal village north of Auckland. He's about as north of Auckland as I am south of Auckland. Um, and he's been with Consultex for around about four years. Bruce, are you all fired up and ready to go? Yes, I am, David. Excellent. You've been involved with business consulting for some time now. Please tell our listeners uh, what you were doing before you became a consultant. Well, it's a bit of a checkered career. I was brought up in Kenya and then went back to Britain and went to university there and qualified as a civil engineer. I worked with one of the largest British consultants and both in Britain and around the world on large construction sites. I was mostly involved on the site supervision rather than the, the design. In 1980, we moved to New Zealand, where I was the tail race engineer for the tail race tunnel on the underground hydro station in the central North Island at Rangipo. This was a complete hydro station that was built completely underground. It was quite exciting. Yeah. Following this, we went into the horticultural business, had a couple of properties do, doing this. And then the last 17 years or the last 17 years of that, I, we were growing cymbidium orchids for as cut flowers, all of which were exported. To achieve market standards, quality and consistency were absolutely paramount. To remain viable in this very exacting market, we had to be highly productive, very clear on what we were trying to achieve, in other words, long-term goals, prioritize and plan ahead, deal with staff, budget very well as our income was only over the picking period, and therefore we had a period where there was no income, half a year. And we had really had to monitor our costs. We were we built this up from absolutely nothing, flat ground, to become one of the la uh, top producers in the country. And this experience of running very small businesses, coupled with my experience on the large construction sites, uh, uh, gives me a very good background for being a consultant. And I know That's exactly that. the pressures that the mm. business, uh, small business owner, faces, uh, which are the majority of New Zealand businesses. Yeah, that's a, um, the, your last, last profession or occupation was, uh, was the orchids. So what attracted you to business consulting? Well, we sold our business successfully, but I still wanted to do something. And I felt that I had some really valuable experience and I wanted to help people. We were heavily involved in the church. And um, so I have a lot of experience of committees and making committee work work rather than just talking. So I've got a wide range of dealing with pe different people from different backgrounds. I was looking around at all options when you invited me to that day seminar back in Auckland. Um, I came home from this absolutely bubbling and then had to try and persuade my wife, who is has her feet much more planted on the ground. <laughs> Luckily, we had a webinar, if you recall, at that stage. And I was able to play that to her. And that was the beginning of my third career. Tell our listeners about your first six months once you'd become a consultant and, and done the training. What happened in your first six months? 
I think the best way to describe that is total immersion. Coming from my background, which wasn't anything formal about consultancy work, meant that there was a vast amount to learn and assimilate. The training was done in a different format, but I found the process hugely exciting. And using the business success program, that it was excellent. I always had that voice of fear sitting on my shoulder, but that's pretty natural. And certainly in that particular state, it's very natural. But that is something that we all need to deal with and learn how to deal with. As you gather, I didn't have any really, well, I had no um, training on this uh, subject. But as I was fairly well known in the local district, I decided to just simply walk into the businesses that I knew or around the area and talk to them. I was absolutely blown away by the way that people opened up, merely because I came in there as a business consultant now, presented a card and asked them the right questions as per the program. And um, they opened up. It was absolutely incredible. I acquired my first three clients or my first clients, two of them, within, within about the first three mo- months of starting with uh, Consultex. And two of those I'm still working with, so that's quite reasonable. That's um, almost four years. Yep. Very good. Could you tell our listeners also how you acquired those clients? You kind of touched on it there a little bit, but in the beginning, and then have you changed, have you changed your methodology to how you get clients now? Yes, certainly. The I didn't have a natural network because I hadn't been in in this type of business at all. So I really had to start from square one. So that, for me, the obvious way to do that was initially work on cold calling. Again, I'd had no experience of that, so it was a question of simply doing it. I We did also have a different form of telemarketing that we were following at that stage or using at that stage, which was of limited success, but certainly that raised one or two of the leads that I followed on to. Nowadays, it's much more about my network. I've got a very large network. I attend two breakfast meetings, so that's one B&I is every week, and the Business Over Breakfast Club is every other week, so I attend those every, you know, regularly. And I attend the Chamber and the Atid business after five network meetings. So I have a very large network and that is the way that I get my clients and I work through those mostly on that now. You touched on the business success program a couple of minutes back. Can you describe to our listeners um, in a little bit more detail the benefit that you gained from it? The business success program is a logical process. It's like consulting by numbers to an extent. It enables you to look at every part of the business and scrutinize it for the gaps and where the gains are going to be made. It also provides the tools that we will need to be able to make those changes. However, I believe that the huge strength of the business success program, apart from it being well tried and logical, is that it's a modular program. And this gives us a huge flexibility. So once you know what you're doing and how to use the program, it means that we can change the program to some extent to actually suit the needs of our clients rather than trying to fit the clients into the program. But having said that, the order of the program works for something like 99% or 90% of the businesses that we would come across. Consultex has actually revolutionized my working process. The part of the thing that I love, like, like about it is that the discovery meeting and the diagnostic meeting is what comes out of those meetings flows directly through to the business plan, through to the personal vision, through to the business vision, and through to the implementation uh, processes that we deal with, the implementation meeting and the management meeting. So it's all integrated, which is a huge help. Most of my clients, as I say, are well established now. So my main use of Consultex is in the implementation stage. I, for the fortnightly meetings and the use, the fact that we incorporate Zero or MyOB get, uh, to download the financials directly into the program means that the monthly financial meeting 
is much, much easier to present and to present nicely than it used to be when we had to pull the figures off the web and then put them into another program and produce it that way. Yeah, that was a bit cumbersome, wasn't it? It took long to, not much longer. And this way we have everything all together, uh, all at our fingertips, and we can refer from month to month. The graphs for the tasks to be done are really good, and being able to send those to the clients as you finish the meeting is yet another bonus. And yet it continues to be improved. Like I've got a, a, a list of of suggestions from the network that have come in over the last two months, three months since we launched launched version four. Uh, and I've, uh, I've got Indy working, Indy's our programmer, I've got him working on those things now. So, uh, so yeah, it, it can only get better and better. Uh, as we as well as I say, you know, I've seen seen the advances that it's that's come through on it, and it certainly do, it is good. And the continuing additions to it do make a difference, do do improve it. So that's great. Yeah. So how many um, for the benefit of our listeners? Uh, how many clients do you have today? And very quickly, what type of businesses are they? Well, I, a number of my clients seem to have come to a natural end. Clients do that. There's the one client that whose main goal was to sell the business. We've just sold it this last week. Apart from that, I've probably got four ongoing clients. Uh, I've had a, another two that have stopped in the last three months or so. And in addition, I've got my two associates, one of whom is in West Auckland and one of whom is up in Whangarei, who so that that also gives me quite a lot of work. They've got about seven clients altogether, and there are quite a lot coming through on there from them. I forgot to mention that Bruce is sorry, sorry Bruce. I forgot to mention yeah. that you've got a, a you've got a firm with two two associates in your firm. Yes, my to give a range an idea of the range of businesses that I'm working with. My clients are, I've got a pharmacist or a chemist, a bottle store or liquor outlet, and he's just about to open a second outlet, a travel agent that has three outlets, a construction business, and a landscaping business. Okay. My past clients included a salary outlet, a mechanic with two different uh, uh, workshops, the vets, and you know about them, David, we merged that firm with another firm to the benefit of both practices. Yeah. And a marine electrician. So it's a very wide range that we can deal with. Would you um, agree with the comment that um, that the business success program would work with any type of business? Well, I think you can see from the range of businesses that I've got there and the you won't know the size of them, but certainly the, the the range of sizes that we've got. Yes, we can do work with any type of business because basically business hasn't changed very much and certainly human character hasn't changed at all. So it's no. exactly the same thing that we're dealing with. Yeah, I agree. So um, everybody has uh, occasionally client failures. Uh, could you tell us briefly about any client failures that you've had and whether you think you could have done something to prevent it. Oh, David, I never tried to think about these. <laughs> no, but the people listening um, are probably interested. Uh, it's always, it, is, it is always always important, and probably the big learning thing that you want I want to take out of the, any failure or any setback is what do I learn from it. It's not the failure so much. It's the fact that I need to learn from it and go forward. I think probably the... Biggest failure that I, I've had, and I s rather suspect I still do it, is that I tend to talk too much. I get very excited about things, and I forget the golden rule of if I say it, they will argue. If they say it, it's true, and therefore to make them say it. Yeah. Um, so that's probably the ongoing sort of failure that happens. And what the results of that is simply doing an awful lot of work trying to acquire a client and then not acquiring them yeah yeah it's about five hours isn't it sometimes more it can be quite a lot of time sometimes it can be much more than that because you can nurture them for a while and then you get excited at the last minute and try to pitch too early or not reading the sign signs properly and again part of pitching is the need to 
just before you get them to sign is to ask that vital question. Now, is there anything that's going to stop you signing? And then to clear those objections up first. Yeah. One of the big failures I think that is worth highlighting is the need for us not to be too fixed on the program. The program, the Consultex, is a fantastic program, but it is there for our use, the consultant's use. It's not necessarily... It's not necessary for the client to know about it as such in many cases. The client wants his particular problem solved and therefore we should work to his pro, his pro, to solve his problem rather than saying to him, ah, I can give you a program that will solve, solve this problem. In actual fact, most small businesses simply aren't interested in the program. They're simply in, interested in having their answers or their problem solved. So... I think the question of using the flexibility of the consult of the business consultant uh, business success program is very important because it enables us to have that flexibility, and it means that we don't squ- try and squeeze a client into a, a square hole a, a square hole yeah. if he's a round person, yes. and, which means that it won't won't work. So we have to work to the client's needs, and that's paramount. And of course, except for what the client sees or the prospect and client sees in the program that we show them where we get them involved with it, that they don't really know about Consultex and what's in the background. Consultex is for us, it's for consultants, it's not for business owners. Absolutely. And certainly myself in the early days and my associates or my, um, yes, my associates, they certainly... There, we, we have had this conversation many times that it's a question of you not selling the program, you're selling the consultancy, you're solving their problems. Yeah, great. Can you give our listeners a couple of examples um, of how you've helped your clients to build a better business? Several I could do. Uh, I'll yeah. pick on two of them. One is obviously the successful sale of this business in a long time that it's come they haven't necessarily moved forward because they've been quite interested in getting out and their concentration hasn't always been to build the whole business, which they could have. They could have improved it a lot. But the end result, and as he, the owner said to me at the end the other day, well, we have achieved what we intended to do. And so that's great. And so that's very satisfactory, really. The other one is my travel agent that I would like to talk about, if I can, a bit. Sure. They, uh, husband and wife, were both set, are both involved in the business, or were both involved in the business, and both selling travel fees. Travel. The business is quite large. One, it comprises of three different outlets, and has about sixteen salespeople. The training of the staff and some of the uh, analysis of how people were doing and things like that wasn't necessarily attended to very well because the owners were so busy selling. They were both top sellers. Over this last year since I've been working with them, there's been a complete sea change. The wife is now only being employed by the company or by the travel agent as a contractor to do very definite tasks that she's allocated, mostly things like spreadsheets, setting up spreadsheets for analysis of KPIs and that sort of thing. No, she absolutely excels in this and loves it. Yeah. What she's really doing now is her love, which is de- redecorating houses. So she's just started a new business doing that. The owner, he excels in the big picture stuff. He absolutely loves what I call crowd gathering. He attends seminars and travel evenings and sells travel marvellously because he tells the story and he relates to people very well. So what is happening now is that he's now become the ambassador and goes around dealing with this sort of work. And all the leads that he gets are then passed directly on to the other salespeople. And um, so the process, and then he's now able to attend to training the salespeople much better. The net result of this, while his, while their income has dropped, the wife is now so much happier because she's doing what she loves and is feeling really positive about this and taken on a new lease of life. The owner is able to do what he loves, but his income has dropped. But he's able to lift each consultant, each of the salespeople, in uh, pro, uh, procedure by two to five percent, 
So at a minimum, he's lifting this his business probably by about 32%. Gosh. which is something he could never have achieved on his own. So that, yeah. again, is a real success, and they, they're they thrilled by it. Is he achieving that because he's got better measurement of the business and he can, as they say, if you, if you measure it, you can manage it? Yes, the, the measurement is there, but it's also he's imparting his knowledge that he ha- has of the travel business and of different places to the salespeople and hearing how they're dealing with, with the clients and constantly lifting their one-on-one approach. So that training is becoming absolutely huge. And they're now being measured and they're getting their goals set, clearly set, and being re-energized if they're not quite getting to where they have to get to and things like that. So it's it's taken a completely different turn from what it was a year ago. That's great. Good, st- good stories there. Uh, could you tell our listeners um, um, just a little bit about the average lifetime of your clients? We always talk about three to five years with a client. Often clients have a they they ask you to come in for a natural life, a natural thing. And I think mostly we we will expect to have a two, two and a half, three year life with our clients. I have, as I say, a couple that are four year old. Most are about two. But um, I have had ones that have dropped out after three months. And that was actually one of my failures that I could have mentioned where I tried to get them on board. I tried to acquire them. And one of the carrots I offered was, well, let's just try it for three months. Yeah. And after three months, he said, we've done it for three months now. Let's stop. And <laughs> I was, I had, I was agency of my own, uh, own destiny there. <laughs> yeah. I talked to, to a couple of the other guys, um, Phil and, and Steve. Um, Steve's got clients to go back right to the start, like four years and, um, a little bit beyond that. What we talk about in training, Bruce, is to is to is to use the language of three to five years or five years, set five year visions, five year goals and those sorts of things. And that that's really communicating to the prospect that we're here for the long term and not for the short term like a everyday consultant would do. So but we, I, I'm certain, and so is Steve um, and, and Phil, that some of their clients will go out to five years and some might even go beyond that. So that's the target. Well, I anyway. mean, my, my liquor outlet, I, once we get the new outlet in, is going to have a completely new set of problems and new arrange, how everything's going to have to be reevaluated as to how he works. And so yeah. that's going to be a completely different thing. So, yes, I can see that one carrying or running on. And my pharmacist, which I've got as well, he's very comfortable with just how we're working at the moment. So that that continues, yes. Let's talk about lifestyle. Because one of the things that I talk about when I'm talking to new people coming into into our network is that the, the consulting business can be as big or as small as you want it to be. And yeah, we had a good... Uh, talking to Phil, the talking to talking to Steve. Um, Steve's got his head wrapped around um, a certain lifestyle and, and so has Phil. Can you tell our people a, a bit about what your lifestyle is like and what your what you've achieved so far? Well, I always believe that I, oh, I've always thought that I'm probably one of the more extreme people in believing in lifestyle rather than just work. And I believe that we need to model this lifestyle, this ability to have a lifestyle rather than just work to all our clients. The concept that I believe that we should be having is that our business should be such fun that we enjoy doing it, but we should also be able to have a full life as well. And it shouldn't be all consuming. All too often, the small businessman is completely drawn into his business that he's bought and then he has to make it work. So he's working every hour there is. And this is really exactly where we can fit in for them. So just to give you an idea of the lifestyle I have, I don't obviously have any office hours. I set my meeting the, meetings in that so that they will fit with my lifestyle and also what the client has on. Yeah. And then I need to work around that. I've set my boat up so that It has a modem on it, which means I can do remote meetings and I can do quite a lot of work from the boat, which means I can spend an awful lot more time away, not necessarily being in the office, but still yet completely attend to my clients. My office is basically my home office. 
but I also use various rooms around the country, which belong to either lawyers or accountants or such like, or the banks, or I meet in the clients' offices, the clients' premises. Uh, and just as an it's example, amazing. yesterday was yesterday was a beautiful day. So I was sitting outside by the pool in the shade of the sun with my computer and just working on a little bit of work there. But that was pretty idyllic. That sounds agree? like heaven. Like I'm sitting in my office now looking out at all the, it's a bit rainy today, but looking uh, out at all the paddocks and all the trees of uh, all the r- rural country areas of South Auckland. It's yes, we, we, we have that same sort of view as much similar to what you have, at David. Yeah. Um, and that's from my office. The other aspect that is worth highlighting here is because everything is remote based or um, on the cloud and because I have very large distances to travel up to Whangarei or around here, I quite often do remote meetings by Skype or by the internet. So that is part of what is happening. So I, again, I don't have to be in an office to do my work. And the other thing that is worth talking about lifestyle, working with clients is just hugely exciting, especially when it starts to move. It's, it's, it, it's enormously rewarding. Well, that's all I've done since 2005. And, and uh, you've probably heard me talking that that I, I even, I, I think I've always been a consultant. It was back in the in the 90s when I owned a big beverage company. Uh, I got a group of all my friends together and every second Tuesday we had a breakfast and I ended up being a kind of a mentor to them. So I kind of been a consultant from way back then. And then in 2005, after I sold that business, I was able to get into it full time. And it's all that I, it's all that I want to do. It's all that Mandy wants to do. We, we, we do believe in focus. We've got an interest in a small mechanical business, but uh, that only takes about three or four hours a week. But apart from that, this is it. Uh, and and I, I get a big kick out of getting results for, for clients. It's uh, very gratifying, I feel. Yes, so, it, but, I agree. Sorry. It, it is just uh, hugely satisfying when it, when it goes well. And when they turn around and say, you know, thanks, Bruce, that's great. Is Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a big, big high, big buzz. <laughs> yeah it's great think about the people who are listening uh, and uh, once upon a time you were a flower grower and you were thinking about the best path to enter the consulting profession uh, there's really two things you can, well there's three things you can do you can you can be what Wayne used to call a notebook and pencil guy which is you go and buy a pad and a and a, and a pencil and, and some business cards and just go and start talking to people the other way is that you can you can scour through the internet to find, I suppose, um, bits and pieces of consulting and cobble them all together, or you can you can join a an organisation like Consultex where most of the hard yards have been done. Uh, and I, I said that on the uh, on the podcast I had with Steve, I said that. I started building the business success program for myself in 2005 and really, in hindsight, all I did was build a skeleton and it's all people like yourself and uh, other people in our network who have put ideas forward and who have helped helped us to build Consultics to where it is today. So thinking about those people who are listening again, can you talk to them just about what the best path actually is? Well, I was going to pick up on some of what you've just said, David, that basically consulting, which is based on just your own experience, and to an extent, however wide it is, I think is it's flawed and it's limited. The advantage with the business success program is that, it's, as you say, it has been built up over a number of years and it's been built up over a number of years. In other words, it's combined the inputs of many, many consultants. The fact that each one of us still use the program in our day-to-day process means that it does work. Otherwise, (laughs) we would have stopped using it. Yeah. The other aspect about this is that working with an experienced partner, I believe, is absolutely invaluable. The gains that are achieved in using a team is huge. As you say, I've got a firm and I've got two consultants or two associates with me at present. Uh, We'll be looking to build more in. But 
the the discussions and the exchanges that we have are absolutely invaluable for both for myself and for them. And they talk about most of their clients, in fact, all their clients with me and talk about the next meeting that they're having and how they go, which means that they can bounce ideas off me. I can throw some ideas back at them, but it saves that awful feeling when you're sitting in front of the client and they throw a complete curved ball at you and you should have the answer and you don't. And you, how do you answer it? So it, it solves a lot of that problem. So certainly going into a business that has support is huge. Going into a business that to an extent you can consult by numbers, painting by numbers type thing is also huge because as I said right at the beginning, Consultex does look at the whole business and it stops us as consultants getting sidetracked just down one area and enables us to be able to go back and go back and see the rest of the business rather than just concentrating on one thing. So I think it's essential to do it that way. That's great. Thank you. And to close the interview, could you give our listeners a couple of gold nuggets of advice that will help them in their consulting career? Well, I think the greatest one right the way through, and it applies from day one that you meet the prospect to the end, however many years later that is, is to remember if they say it, it's true. If I say it, they can argue about it. Yeah. It's something that is so easy to forget when I get excited or enthusiastic or when I can see what should be being done and I don't take the time to get them to say it, then it's always a hard yak and often it doesn't, they just simply don't take it. Doing regular reviews, both of yourself and of with the client of the progress there is just hugely essential which does mean that we need to be taking notes and keeping measurements of what is happening in the business. And I think the last one is that we need to remember that while Consultex provides us with a fantastic program, we actually have to work to achieve the client's goals, not our goals. And therefore we have to deal with what he wants so that it will work. And not That's be, great. And not be too, too fixed on trying to make them fit the program. You got to be a bit adaptable, don't you? Yes, very much so. Do well, Bruce. Thank you for a fra- frank and interesting interview. Uh, I'm sure our listeners will have gained a heck of a lot from it. Right, thank you, David. That's great. I enjoyed that as well. Well, David, that was a really interesting interview, and it was packed with all sorts of valuable takeaways. I'd like to dive a little deeper into a few of these points. Sure. Bruce mentioned a golden rule. If I say it, they will argue. And if they say it, it's true. Yeah, Bruce is 100% correct on that because um, we need to get that through discussion. We need to we need to get them to talk about what their problems are and they will tell us and, and um, we're obviously taking notes. And um, Bruce is right, because if they say it, then they will believe it. It's their perception that it's true. So that's a really important part of, um, of business consulting. And if they perceive that they have a problem, then they're probably more likely to agree that there's obviously a problem if they've told you, but agree to coming up with a solution for it. Of course, yes. Part of the process is that um, is that we need to find out what their challenges are and um, get them to express what those challenges are. And as you said, they'll believe it. So we take notes on that of um, what they believe their, their, their challenges or problems are. So is this mostly applicable when you're trying to sign the client or does this carry on throughout the relationship? Mostly when you're trying to sign a, a prospect into a client. Um, that's the most important place to do it. But it's, a, it's an important part of the consulting process all the way through. It's what's in the client's head and what they believe to be true that's most important. When you're talking to a business owner, can you give us an example of a situation where if you say something, they would disagree, and if they say it, they would agree? Uh, to answer your question, uh, in the e which is a very good book, Julius, uh, he talks about there that a business owner will defend to the death just about um, the beliefs that he actually has. But the problem is that his beliefs 
uh, the things that has got his business into trouble and why we've come along to help him. So um, in the early stages of um, turning him from a prospect into a client, um, we need to get him to, to verbalize or express the the problems that he's having and we need to take notes on that because if he says it, he believes it. Okay, and Bruce also shared with us another lesson that I think we can learn from and that's perhaps not to plant any negative or detrimental ideas in the mind of the client or prospect and this occurred when Bruce mentioned um, to a client or someone who is signing up as a client is let's try it for three months and see how it goes. What are your thoughts on saying that to a client and planting the idea that maybe this relationship should only last three months because in Bruce's case at the end of that three months they terminated. I heard Bruce say that and um, and and um, when he recorded that a few years ago I did go and talk to him about it because I don't recommend that. I believe you're setting them up for a, for a cancellation in three months and it sounds short term whereas our whole process is we want to work with them long term. Like you can't do anything in three months. Mm. Okay, but then on the flip <clears throat> side, you've also said that there might be a time and place to say something like that. If it's an absolute lost cause, absolutely, totally, and the prospect is determined that they only want to dip their toe in the water and have a three-month agreement, then that would come under the commander's intent, um, which for those that don't know what that is, that's an armed forces term for... Um, battle instructions that are given to the commander of a, of a um, whole lot of um, soldiers or um, something like that. I think it's a platoon of soldiers. This is an American term. And it means that if it's going really, really, really bad, open up the envelope and there'll be instructions inside of what to do. So almost like a last ditch attempt. This is, is this is the bare minimum. And so you would say that in the instance where you think you're probably not going to get them over the line if you, unless you give this a go. That's right. It's it's your decision as a consultant to to whether you're going to um, use that or not. I, I probably wouldn't use it. I would keep saying it's long term, it's long term, it's long term, and keep driving on that because you got to think about this. The prospect has taken them fifteen years to get the business into the mess that it's in now. We're not magic. We can't fix it in three months. Of course not. <laughs> however, however, though, we can make some substantial um, substantial progress moving forward. And um, you're taking a bit of risk because in the first three months of consulting, um, you will spend a lot of time building a business plan and doing all of this sort of stuff. So if you're confident that you can talk them around um, at the three-month mark and have it continuing on, then that's your decision. Bruce mentioned a phrase that he uses in closing the deal. The phrase is, is there anything that's going to stop you signing? Now, David, what makes this such a powerful technique? Well, what it does, Joel, is, is it draws out objections because nobody will sign anything if they've got a question mark sitting over the top of their head. Um, so, so the whole idea in selling anything to anybody is to draw out the objections and write them down as you're going along because they'll see you writing them down and it's the equivalent of them agreeing with it and then you answer their objections and then as you answer them you tick them which means you're eliminating them in the front of the prospect uh, and then you close again is there anything that's going to stop you from signing you know and and he might come up with one objection and then you write that down and then you tick that off and that's it uh, he should say no let's get going on this i'm really happy i want to do this I want to see all the improvements that we've spoken about after the last two meetings. I feel like that would also be a, a good relationship building tool if you're looking to solve solve their objections throughout the sales process. You're looking basically to make it work for them. Absolutely. And you've got to remember too that that the prospect, that this is a whole new world to them. They've never come across anything like this before. They've never told anybody their problems. They haven't told their bank manager, their wife, their mates. They haven't told anybody and they've told you as the consultant. Uh, and uh, it's really important that, that they are 100% invested in you and believe you and trust you 
and all those sorts of things to do what you say is possible to do, which you've gone through in the acquisition process. Now, Bruce has done something pretty exciting as well that he mentioned in, in the interview. He appears to have pioneered remote consulting from his yacht. And he mm-hmm. also mentioned the ability to be location independent. How does this relate to, to us in today's age? Well, it absolutely, uh, absolutely relates to us because in the last year, we've had issues with the pandemic uh, and and a lot of our people have been forced to work from home. But gosh, who'd have thought that four years ago he was doing this? And and it's not just in his yacht parked in the marina. He, he and his wife um, go for trips all around New Zealand. They go across the, just for those of you who are outside of New Zealand, um, he does like 500 to 1,000 kilometre um, trips um, around New Zealand and he parks up in, 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 in what are they, in little coves and things like that where it's nice and calm. He, he goes away for three or four weeks and he's still consulting to his clients because he's got a little internet antenna on the top of his boat and it works really well. So that does, it, it, it relates very much to today because, because part of our training uh, is that we, we teach people to do remote consulting because there's, we, we don't know what's around the corner. Um, and just for the people who are watching this, this is recorded in um, January of 2021. So we still don't know what's around the corner for this year. Um, so we're upskilling everybody to be able to use the internet, just like Bruce did four years ago, to be able to work with their clients. So it sounds to me like it is fantastic lifestyle benefits, like imagine getting on your yacht or your boat or, or road tripping in your RV all around the countryside. And it also gives you the ability to not be directly uh, consulting face to face in the in the instance that we had a lockdown or your client didn't even want to meet face to face for health reasons. So it just sounds like a win win. It is, but there's 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 lots of other benefits too because when you're consulting through using the internet, then you're saving on travel time. So you're saving on the time and the expenses and cost, fuel cost of doing that travel time. The meetings over the internet tend to be shorter than face to face, like face to face, you gotta wait for the coffee or tea to come and this and that and how's the weather and um, over the internet, um, there'll be a little bit of that. Um, you can't get coffee though, you make your own <laughs> coffee, but but it's straight to the point and um, the, the clients appreciate that because they, they they are aware of the costs and especially where there's the management team involved as well um, the owner's sitting there and he's got three people sitting in the meeting and they cost x dollars per hour so yeah there's lots and lots of benefits um, and you can move meetings around easier and, and record them if you wanted to and all that sort of stuff so another thing that bruce mentioned was there was a lot of value in bouncing ideas off other consultants. So he's part of a, a firm that's got three other, that had three other consultants. That's actually since grown to a much larger number since this interview took place. But how important is this, the ability to bounce ideas and have a bit of a, a conversation about what your clients are doing to other consultants? It's very important. Some consultants tell me that they get a bit lonely uh, out there and that they because uh, they go from working in corporate for example then they go into a working by themselves for themselves by themselves and they appreciate it but one of the most important things that they get out of that uh, camaraderie is that they're able to bounce questions off them and in our network we actually have a, a, a once a week meeting where all the consultants in our network can get together and they chat and that's incredibly incredibly valuable for all of them to be able to say hey I've got such and such a client this is the problem we're having what do you think you would do and someone else who might have a, a similar client or even experience a similar problem in a different kind of business they can put in their two cents and it's the old one plus one equals three situation where you get two consultants that are really experts in in consulting and they come up with some fantastic ideas so i can absolutely agree and see what bruce is getting at with um with having the ability to have that conversation yeah it's great um bruce's parting piece of advice was to have regular reviews to ensure you're focused on meeting 
the client's goals. Why is it so critical to put the client's goals above all else? Well, because it's all about him. And it's not about us, it's about, the, it's about the client and what he wants to achieve out of his business and maybe even personally as well. So we've got to keep focused on that at every meeting and keep moving forward with the client towards what his long-term goals are. Well, thank you, David. And thanks again to Bruce for that fantastic interview. Four years on, the value is still absolutely all there. Everything Business Consulting is brought to you by Consult X, a global business consulting community that gives you everything you require to take control of your lifestyle and income by becoming a successful business consultant. Consult X guides you through the entire process of building and running your own consulting business with a complete online academy, a system to acquire clients, a framework and software to provide them with real results, an international community of like-minded individuals. Also, we have a suite of resources and much, much more. To find out more about this opportunity, visit consultx.com.